Hi everybody. Uh, this is lecture 2 for week 9. So, uh, we are still in the topic related to pricing. Uh, in the previous lecture, uh, I have uh, explained about this. But I think I have to do it again briefly because this subtopic uh, about measuring profit will continue until the end of the topic so i will i will do it again then okay measuring profit see the first point is profit is a measure of difference of the difference between what a firm puts into making and selling a product or service and what it receives so profit is very simple uh, in accounting profit is revenue minus expenses and cost so profits are measured to uh, the purpose of measuring profits there, there are four uh, purposes here First, to determine the capability of the firm, measure the managerial performance, determine whether or not a firm adheres to government regulations, and number four, signal the market about the opportunities for others to earn a profit. Okay, so, uh, basically, in accounting, if you want to calculate profit, then you have to prepare an income statement. Here, uh, the two main format for income statement are first, the absorption costing approach. It is also called full costing. So this absorption costing approach, the format is like the one that you have learned in financial accounting. So the format is like this, revenue or sales minus cost of goods sold and then you will get gross profit and minus expenses, uh, you will get the net profit or net income. That is the absorption costing approach. You will see the an example of this uh, income statement in the next slide. Okay, the second format that is typically used in accounting is called variable costing approach. It is also called direct costing. So this uh, approach, the format of the income statement is like this. Uh, revenue minus variable cost, you will get the contribution margin. And then minus fixed cost, uh, you will get the net profit or net income. You will see the... Uh, you will see an example of this format income statement also in the next slide. Okay, these are the limitations of profit. The first one, uh, I have as, uh, discussed this or explained this in the previous video. The first one, it focus on past performance. Second one is uncertain economic conditions. Number three is difficulty of ca capturing all important factors in financial measures. Successful firms measure far more than accounting profit. Okay, this one is about segment reporting. I think you have learned about this, about the absorption costing, uh, variable costing, and also segment reporting in ACT 3131. So this one is not very difficult for you. So let's see the example of segment reporting. Uh, Alden company manufactures two product, basic fax machines and multifunction fax machines. The multifunction fax uses more advanced technology. Therefore, it is more expensive to manufacture. So this is uh, this is a very common thing. 
that you I think everybody knows if the if a product is complex then it is difficult to manufacture then the cost is higher so let's see the the number here see for the basic product and multifunction product see the small table the number of units uh, 20,000 basic and 10,000 multifunction so most of the time if the product is cheap then a business or a company can sell more so like here basic product can yeah, the number of units is 20,000 compared to multifunction is only 10,000 direct labor hours uh, 40,000 hours for basic 15,000 hours for multifunction price is 200 and 350 prime cost per unit is 50, 55 and 95 overhead per unit is 30 and 22 dollar 50 cent okay this is the the format of the income statement that i have told you earlier so this income statement is for a business that has two segments so here the segment is according to the product uh, basic and multifunction okay see here if if you use uh, absorption cost income statement then the income statement will look like this first you have to show the sales see here the sales uh, 4000 for basic 3500 for the multifunction product and the total is 7500 so it is in thousand of dollars so 4 million uh, for basic 3.5 million for multifunction the total is 7.5 million and then you have to minus the cost of goods sold see here the cost of goods sold is 1.7 million 1. 1.175 million the total is 2.85 million so the gross profit for basic is 2.3 million, for multifunction is 2.325 million and the total is 4.625 million. And then you have to minus the expenses. There are two expenses here, marketing expenses and admin expenses. You can see the number there and the operating income for basic uh, product is 833,000. For multifunction product 1.042 million and the total is 1.875 million. Okay, this is the absorption costing income statement. Okay, now this is the variable costing income statement. So if there is a question asks you to prepare the income statement using absorption costing or variable costing you have to remember what is the format and you have to know how to do it okay see here like i said earlier for the variable costing income statement you have to separate the cost and expenses into fixed and uh, variable so the format here let's see the first thing that you have to show in the income statement is the revenue or sales uh, 4 million for the basic 3.5 million for the multifunction and 7.5 million the total and then you have to minus the variable cost the cost of goods sold most of the time has to uh, group of cost first is the variable cost and then the second is fixed cost the fixed cost is always the fixed overhead cost uh, direct material and direct labor are always uh, variable cost so you can see there the contribution margin for the basic product is 2.238 million uh, contribution margin for multifunction product is 2.102 million the total contribution margin is 4.34 million but you can see here the fixed costs are not allocated to the two segments you can see here in this uh, example or sample income statement sample variable costing income statement the fixed cost uh, are written in the column for the total cost this 
fixed cost are not allocated to the two segments. If you can remember when you learn uh, about this in uh, about segment reporting in ACT 3131, if a business allocate or divide the fixed cost into uh, segments of business, then there, there will be a problem. Uh, you can check your your notes or, or textbook for ACT 3131. You will know what is the problem. Okay, and then you can see that the operating income or profit is 1.875 million. Okay, these are the advantages and disadvantages of using absorption cost pricing formula or income statement. Advantages, the first one is price covers all costs. Second, perceived as equitable. Number three is comparison with competitors. Number four, absorption cost used for external reporting. Uh, another point to remember is the for external reporting purpose or in another term that we can use is for financial accounting you uh, according to the accounting standard uh, you have to use absor abs absorption costing uh, you have no choices uh, for external purpose or external reporting you have to use absorption costing but the this advantage is full absorption unit price obscure the distinction between variable and fixed cost when you prepare an income statement according for using the absorption costing format you you do not separate the variable cost and fixed cost uh, most managers uh, they want to see uh, separate uh, uh, separate costs they want to see uh, two group of costs when they analyze the accounting numbers uh, because a variable cost is easier for them to control fixed cost is difficult for a short term uh, fixed cost cannot be reduced uh, cannot be manipulated so that is the disadvantage of absorption cost pricing formula very important And then this is variable cost pricing formula. There are three advantages. The first one, do not obscure cost behavior pattern. Variable costing income statement, you can see the the, uh, the, the variable cost and fixed cost are separate. So, and then do not require fixed cost allocation. See, like I said earlier in the sample uh, variable costing income statement uh, the fixed costs uh, are not allocated to the different segments and then number three more useful for managers uh, this is the most uh, the important point managers would like to see the uh, what are the variable costs and what are the fixed costs uh, managers they have to increase uh, have to minimize cost uh, in order to to maximize profit so they want to control cost they want to see how they can uh, manipulate the cost or reduce the cost as much as they can but there is one disadvantage the first the thing is fixed cost may be overlooked in pricing decision resulting in prices that are too low to cover total uh, cost so the disadvantage is when the manager focus too much on variable cost, they tend to forget about the fixed cost. So resulting in prices that are too low to cover total cost. They are willing to sell product uh, when uh, the price of the product is higher than the unit variable cost. That is the thing that a manager has to aware okay product cost distortion high volume products may be over costed low volume products may be under costed uh, this is very 
typical thing that happen in costing. Uh, you tend to allocate more cost to high volume product, but uh, allocate less cost to the low volume product. If you can remember, uh, to to settle these two problem, uh, the choice is to use activity based costing. Activity based costing is a method, maybe it can be said as a better method that can be used to allocate cost to products. Okay, so like I said earlier, the, uh, the alternative or the better way to allocate cost to product is to use activity based costing. When you have to use activity based costing, uh, you have to uh, you have to identify what are the activities of production that you need to do to produce a product. So these are uh, examples of activities, uh, cost driver for every activity, and the uh, cost related to each activity. For example, set up. Set up is an activity of production. When a business wants to produce something, the business has to set up the machines and everything. And the cost driver for this setup activity is the number of setups. The logic is the higher the number of setups, the more cost a business has to pay. Maintenance, uh, the cost driver is maintenance hours, supplies, direct level hours, power, machine hours, machine depreciation activity, the cost driver is machine hours, and other factory costs. Uh, other factory costs is an example of cost that, that cannot be allocated. There is no logical activity or no logical um, cost driver for this other factory cost. So that's why there is no cost driver for this. Okay, let's see. Uh, so, uh, this is related to the calculation or the allocation of cost using activity based costing. So, you can see here uh, for basic product and multifunction product, uh, these are the, the usage of cost drivers. For example, for basic product the number of setup is 10 for the multifunction product the number of setups are the number of setups is 30 so now when you use abc most of the time you can uh, settle the problem of under costing the low quantity product and uh, over costing the high quantity product here you can see clearly the complex the more complex the product uh, the higher the cost uh, will be allocated so okay next slide you have learned about abc before so i am not uh, worried about that so when you use the abc costing activity based costing this is the way to allocate the cost there are no more fixed cost or variable cost, but the costs are all allocated using the uh, activities, based on activities. Uh, if you want to, to refresh your memory about activity-based costing, you can check my uh, YouTube channel and there is a playlist that I created for how to do management accounting. In that uh, playlist, uh, I have a video that I made uh, to explain about how to allocate uh, costs using activity-based costing. You can you can watch that video. Okay, so so you can see here, uh, all costs are allocated using the or based on the activity of the production, but the 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 other fixed overhead cost fifty five thousand uh, has no 
logical uh, cost driver so uh, the cost is not allocated you can see in the column number four the other fix overhead 55,000 and admin expenses uh, 2 million uh, are not allocated so this is divisional profit uh, this is a sample of uh, absorption costing um, format income statement for a business that has four divisions alpha beta gamma and delta so you can see the the format is revenue minus cost of goods sold you get the gross profit minus the expenses you will get the net profit Okay, so what have you learned about that uh, measuring profit or profit measurement? Uh, you have uh, the first thing that you have learned, like, uh, and the first thing that I have explained is what is profit? Uh, profit is the difference between revenue and expenses. In accounting, you want to calculate profit. The formula, the basic formula is revenue minus cost and expenses you will get the profit uh, and then we have discussed about what are the purpose of uh, calculating profit for a business the main purpose is to to know the performance of the business in accounting if a business makes profit then we say that the business is performing well but if the if a business uh, making loss is making loss then we say that the business is not performing well not good that is the basic or the general idea and then uh, what are the methods yet that you, that you can use to calculate profit in this slide you have seen three methods uh, and we are focusing on uh, be, uh, on businesses that that have segments so you you have seen that the first method that you can use is the absorption costing method and then the second method is the variable costing method and these two methods uh, has advantages and disadvantages and and a better option is to use activity based costing now when you use activity based costing uh, we can say that we can say that most of the time, activity-based costing is better. It's a better method uh, that can be used to, to calculate profit for a business. Whether the business is uh, having uh, segments or no segments. Activity-based costing, most of the time, is a better method to allocate cost because the calculation is uh, based on uh, activities of production okay this is the last <coughs> slide i think competitive bidding uh, bidding is something like this uh, if you have a business uh, maybe uh, at, at some time you have to bid for a job maybe you have to bid for uh, a job to supply something to to another business or to an to a customer uh, bidding is something like this you offer a price for the job uh, and then there are other companies also offer uh, their price for the job most of the time the customer will choose uh, the cheapest offer that's bidding uh, in malaysia uh, most of the time uh, companies they uh, bid uh, to provide uh, service or product to government uh, 
uh, and the process is like this government open uh, tender so many businesses will will uh, will offer their price offer price for their service or product uh, and then the government will choose the best the best offer so that that is the bidding process uh, okay so this uh for in this chapter the bidding uh competitive bidding uh, is very important you have to know the the logic okay so when you uh involve in participate in a bidding process uh, means you are competing with other companies uh, to offer the best price for a product or a service so you have two choices if you uh, choice one is you you have high bid price and you offer to the customer high bid price but when you offer high bid price the thing that will happen is low probability of winning bid because other company may be offer lower prices so you are going to lose there is a low prob probability of winning the bid but the good thing is if you win you will get high profit and that is the thing that you can see in the green box there okay and then the second choice is you can offer low bid price in the bidding process the good thing about offering low bid price is uh, there is a high probability of winning the bid but the one not good thing about it is low profit if you winning the bid because you offer low price when you offer low price the profit margin is very uh, small so you will get low profit if you win the bid oh there is another slide so guidelines for bidding uh, this is the solution if the bidder has excess capacity then the bidder can can offer low bid price any bid price in excess of incremental cost of job will contribute to fixed cost and profit. Uh, this is depend on the excess capacity. If if you have a company and you want to involve in a bidding process, if your company has excess capacity, then you can offer low price, low bid price. It means that uh, if you offer low bid price, if you win, maybe you do not make uh, profit, but you can make enough uh, contribution margin that can cover your business fixed cost. If you have a business, if you can sell your product uh, higher than the variable cost then you will get contribution margin the contribution margin will cover your fixed cost that's a good thing about it any bid okay see second point uh, for the uh, bidder has no has excess capacity the second point is the second black dot is any bid price in excess of incremental cost of job will contribute to fixed cost and profit okay that is for bidder that has excess capacity but if the bidder has no excess capacity so if the bidder has no excess capacity the 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 good way to involve in a bidding process is you offer high bid price and the second point is bid price should be full cost plus normal profit margins as winning bid will displace existing work okay the point is like this if you have a business in the future and then your business 
is operating at full capacity means has no excess capacity it is in full capacity production then if you want to involve in a bidding process you should offer high bid price why you should offer high bid price because if you win the bidding process you have to sacrifice the existing production in order to to fulfill the the uh, the offer that you have you have made let's say now you you have a business uh, the capacity is uh, 10000 product per month now you are operating at full capacity the capacity is 10000 your your production is also 10000 so if you been uh, if you win a bidding process then you have to sacrifice the existing production uh, so you have to offer higher bid price uh, with the with the logic that if you win the the bidding process you have to produce uh, for the uh, for the thing that you have uh, you that you want and you have to sacrifice the existing production uh, that you have made so you have to offer a higher price so that when you replace you sacrifice you get better than the thing that you have sacrificed you will get profit higher than before you you win the the bidding process okay that's all for this uh, topic about pricing and do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section uh, that is your record for attendance thank you very much